For January 19th, 2018, we talk about the Nintendo Direct announcements, Sundered, and we ask you what your favorite winter game is. Welcome to level 227. My name is Cole Ross. My name's David Mysmith. I'm Jella Prendes. I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Hey, David, welcome back. Yo, Yo. what's up? Yeah, come, coming at us live again from San Francisco. You were yep. you, First you weren't there, then you were there, then you weren't there, and now you're there again. You, you gotta <laughs> keep the city guessing. Yeah, you know, you gotta sure. sneak up on it. It's a city you gotta sneak right. up on. We're back up to three time zones now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but thank you for, uh, for, for, for hopping on. You're living, uh, you're, you're, you're living the city life. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, ended up right in the middle of Chinatown. So that's uh, kind of an interesting experience. So my understanding is it's always a parade there. Oh uh, yeah. More or less. Okay. Um, is actually, that, is that how you get to work? Do you just hop on a float? Yeah, yeah, you, you you just find one of the, the like, lion uh, dance things riding by, and you just hop on. Yeah, just you just join a dragon for a little yep. bit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, it was actually kind of cool on, um, I think it was Sunday, uh, there was a, some business was having a grand opening, so they hired one of the uh, kung fu schools in town to do, like, the dragon uh, dance, or uh, lion dance, technically, hmm. things. So that's that's really cool. There yeah. is uh, lots of dancing and much fireworks. And yeah. It sounds like I'm making making fun of it. I'm not. I'm actually jealous because that sounds really cool. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting. I, I kind of joked beforehand. Uh, it's only taken me about a week to get frustrated with uh, tourists, though. So yeah. that's a thing. Mm, yeah, but I remember from when I used to live in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yep. See, the uh. trick is to live somewhere nobody wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, I'm happy that you're back on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, any any cool stories from the past week of getting uh, getting adjusted, David? Um. <sighs> Not too much. I mean, uh, right now I've only got a bed and pretty much no other furniture, so that's a thing. <laughs> but um, you know, it, it, it's a hyper efficiency. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you were shooting for minimalism, right? <laughs> yes, yes, that is true. <laughs> yeah, I am a- achieving that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. I've got a I've got a cool story. I want to say thanks to somebody. Uh, I've been I had been looking for an SNES classic, and I'd given up just because you know holidays went by and stock didn't go back up. Allison sent me a tweet uh, with a link uh, to an Amazon flash deal, and I managed to grab one. It's coming on Thursday. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah. So I wanted to thank her. That was uh, very thoughtful of her to send that along. Sweet, very cool. And that's my story. How about you, Jolla? What's up? I fucking ran a marathon. Yes, you did. <laughs> R.I.P. So, your toenail. Yeah, I know. Uh, and my burgeoning career as a foot model, that will never happen now because this is toenail number two. Yeah. <laughs> I lost its brother last year to the Houston Marathon. I think what it is is like um, some of the roads that we have to run on are slanted just so to where like the front of your foot is just like jamming up against the front of your shoe for like miles. Uh. and. You know, that'll just, like, fuck up anybody's toenails. Uh, I do trim them just for the people who run and know, you know, yes, I do trim my toenails, but it wasn't enough (laughs) to save it from that. So, uh, yeah, and I I wasn't racing it, so I ended up coaching a lady who, like, she just kind of broke down a couple of days before the marathon while she was doing, like, an easy run, and she was just, like, sobbing and nervous because she was just like, I don't know if I can do this. And Mm -hmm. so I just ran it with her and uh, coached her through it and was just, uh, you know, making sure that we were going at a good pace and everything. And I told her, "Uh, look, Misty, there's going to be about mile 20. You're going to get passed by a dude in a wheelchair, a blind man and several old people. So. When we got to about mile 20, sure enough, uh, we did, we did we saw a person in a wheelchair going the opposite way uh, outside of the 
um, bounds of where the race was being held. And I don't know if he was just like, you know, checking it out or if he had already finished his, <laughs> <He> <laughs> but he you. was just like, he was like high sailing it. Like he was just like, woo, way zooming back real fast. So we saw that we saw a blind man. And then after that, like for the last, you know, 6.2 miles, I was just like grinning and pointing out every hunched over old man that passed us <laughs> because <laughs> They might be hunched over, their back isn't straight, and they are shuffling. They look like they're shuffling, and they are wearing the same clothes that they raced in in 1970. Yeah. But these dudes, like, you can see all the muscles in their calves working as they're going because they've been running for so long. Yeah. They're, they're, you they're, know? they're she, hunched over for wind resistance purposes. Right. right. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then she's like, well, you know, that's that's discouraging. I'm like, no, it's not because no. they all started somewhere. You, This is your first marathon. You're going to be that old person passing everybody up later on in life. So, yeah, like, yeah. no, no, nah, you just started this. So. Mm -hmm. And and then come the costumes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, that's cool. Fair, pretty much everything is better with costumes. <laughs> You know, it's weird that you guys are mentioning costumes because just today I got into this whole Twitter conversation with uh, some of the listeners about manga and anime. And, oh, uh, no, no, don't do that. Oh, God. No, Continue. no. Okay. Like, uh, what ended up happening is that uh, uh, myself and Mai uh, were basically, you know, requested to cosplay Zex and uh, Gally or Yoko, whichever name you want to use her for her. Uh, from Gun or Battle Angel Alita, <laughs> uh, I I would be Zex in this case, and uh, Mai would be Gally or Yoko. So, yeah, and uh, that's for like the two people who know what that is. <laughs> but uh, they will squee when they hear that. But yeah, that's a that's a thing that mm -hmm. happened. So yeah, uh, yeah, there was this long conversation about cosplay. So 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 they want you they they want you to cosplay as those characters for a marathon. Oh, I, no, oh, just like, in general, just, run, no. just, just like in general, but like if I had a costume and it was something I could run in, I would run in it. Oh yeah. And you've done so, that before. You did the superhero one. You did a, yeah, I did the superhero the one Santa and I would, run. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the Santa run. I forgot about that. Yeah. When I was Terminator elf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations that, on your marathon yeah. run. <laughs> that is, that is now, uh, the way that people coin my, uh, running stance when I'm crossing finish line is like this is your terminator elf look because <laughs> apparently i look the same every single race and uh you know because uh, somebody was watching the marathon finishing times from last year uh -huh. and you know uh they were like dude you look exactly the same you were doing the terminator elf i'm like okay <laughs> the terminator it's, elf yeah. that's the point. It's sort of like with weightlifting you know no one cannot look ridiculous while lifting weights or playing bass probably true <laughs> Are we thinking like bass guitar, bass, you know, About, sax, yeah, yeah, or just bass any guitar. bass version of an instrument? Yeah, any any long instrument. Okay. Yeah. So when you're playing a, a trombone, you look ridiculous. Let's say one fourth of the time, hitting those low notes. Fair mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> cool, Ben. How about you? Uh, not much news. Uh, well, I have stuff for the uh, when we get to what we've been playing over the week, but mostly it was a huge, or not a huge. There's an ice storm in Texas, and so the city basically shut down, or at least yeah. the city of Austin shut down. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, Houston, Houston did too. <laughs> so I had an adult snow day today, so mm -hmm. that was nice. Uh, yeah, um, there were over 300 accidents so far today. I'm sure now that it's nighttime, it's going to get way worse here. And so, like, I know I was joking about it the other week where I was like, yeah, it's funny how people react to the weather. Yeah, when it's like 30 or 40, people are freaking out. But, like, yeah. when it's really, really cold and then, you know, there's ice and people are seriously, like, dying of hypothermia out there and animals and everything. Yeah. There's and a, people are getting in all these wrecks. That's another thing. That's not funny. There's a so. thick red line at 32 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's snowy and icy over here too. And I work remotely, so nothing changes for me. I still got to work. Wow. So yeah, if I got snowed in, I'd still have to work too. So yeah. Lucky you. Were, High there, five. <laughs> <laughs> were there people in your company that were out who don't work remotely or no, they all worked remotely today. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, well, um, all of that sounds good. Big stuff Does happening. It? 
<laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, not. I mean, not, not the not the weather stuff. I'm happy that you're. I'm happy that you're inside and warm and safe. Yes. <laughs> and that I'm happy you got your snow day, David. I'm happy you moved. Uh, all, all not happy you moved. Jeez. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm happy. I'm happy. Jeez. I, I, I was. I was summing all that stuff up. I was saying the good stuff. I'm happy. You almost made it out of that hole. Oh, fuck. Wow. Well, we've got the usual kind of show for you, the the brief, the multiplayer, and the grind, and why don't we get started with the brief, the brief where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Uh, the big, huge thing, uh, Ben, is the one that you brought here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us what's up with Nintendo? Yeah, so the Nintendo Direct was last week, I think, on the 11th. Um, so a lot of you probably maybe have already heard of this stuff. Uh, but they made some announcements. Uh, one is they talked about the uh, the Mario expand or DLC that's coming out in February. Um, it's going to feature a new game where people can like uh, run around maps, like hide things in a timed in a certain amount of time, and then uh, players will play the same maps and try and find what they've hidden. Ooh. So it's kind of like a weird Easter egg hunt sort of thing. Um, but then you get points for like cleverly hiding things in the map. So it'll be fun for people who've explored a lot of the corners of the map. Um, and then, uh, they're releasing new costumes with the DLC as well. Uh, and then like, uh, photo modes and stuff like that, similar to like, uh, horizon zero dawn. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's, a it's a pretty game. That's a, that's yeah. a good idea. And they have this, uh, they showed one photo mode that's kind of interesting where it's like you can make a Mario, a custom Mario coin, g- given the screenshot of like the game, like it does like a weird skin on top of, I don't know, mm-hmm. it looks interesting. Um, I think it's a free DLC. Um, it doesn't, I haven't read into the detail that much, but. I, uh, I cannot get used to the idea of Nintendo doing DLC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, some of the other things they announced, uh, they're releasing the, uh, Donkey Kong, uh, Tropical Freeze, the game that was for the Wii U, yeah. uh, for the Switch, uh, which I'm excited about because I did not play it on the Wii U, so I would probably play that on the Switch. This is, um, this is going to sound sarcastic, but Tropical Freeze is considered to be the best Sonic game in years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, that, there... that, that's just the way that I've heard it described by, like, Daniel Riendo on waypoint okay. and stuff like that like it's supposed to be like legit really good and nobody played it because of the wii u yeah so that's probably a good move on their part then is yeah. to bring it to a wider audience um but uh yeah so i'm excited to pick that up whenever that comes out mm-hmm. uh it's supposed to come out on may 4th i guess for the switch nice uh, um and then the last one is they're adding expansion to uh mario and rabbit's kingdom uh where they're adding donkey kong to that so Neat. there's they're pushing Donkey in a couple different titles. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's the year of Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is some interesting announcements. Um, it'll yeah. be it'll uh-huh. be interesting if they continue on that line and Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle becomes some kind of weird Smash Brothers Smash, kind of yeah. thing. Smash Kong. <laughs> yeah. Except... At what point does it become canon? <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I, th- I think smash is not canon because they're all toys is the thing mm. but i have no idea if that is the case for the uh for the rabbits one yeah yeah um, and this was the event where from announced that they are doing the dark souls remaster bringing it mm. to switch and also uh doing like a high definition kind of like up res of it uh for current gen system kind of things and doing a full court press across all the shows um definitely gonna play it we'll talk about it um we're not bringing bonfire side chat back period uh <laughs> <laughs> i'm flattered people want it but a remaster wouldn't be the way that wouldn't be the time to do it so we'll talk about it somewhere and we're going to announce what that is so you don't have to worry about missing it also yes we know about it <laughs> 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 there's that other one yeah it's 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 immensely flattering that whenever a dark souls thing comes out people are, people can rush into us um but yeah well, I'm remember just, good remember when i was talking a while back and i was like you know if dark souls was on some kind of a handheld system i would totally play it and now it's like actually coming to the switch and i'm like damn it because <laughs> well, i don't excuse, have a switch you don't have a switch At- yeah yeah well i don't have a switch but that's just another reason to want to switch oh so. yeah yeah I mean, there's the, the, there's a lot of juice on that Vita, but eventually that Vita's going to run out of juice. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, all this stuff is cool. Um, I'm excited about um, the Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. That'll be fun. Yeah, likewise. Uh, Jala, what's going on with the Houston Outlaws? Yeah, so uh, the Overwatch League started up, and uh, just one day before it began, Activision Blizzard announced Twitch as its partner. Uh, Blizzard's hope was that the matches streaming on Twitch will help make esports mainstream. Uh, there are about 35 million Overwatch players worldwide, and the league has teams from different cities around the world, including Houston. Um, some folks are worried that the announcement, like the, the Twitch announcement um, coming you know, the day before the thing started, would hurt viewer numbers for the opening matches, but it seems to be doing pretty good if you ask me. I mean, like it, they've got plenty of people watching it, so I, I don't think that that was uh, quite you know, the big deal that everybody was worried it would be. But uh, Kevin Lynn, the COO of Twitch, said that the Overwatch League is making a major impact on esports by reshaping the industry with city-based teams. And since that's the way that other sports tend to work, um, you know, like actual physical sports work, uh, that is kind of a big deal to yeah. have it um, set up like that kind of regional style with, uh, you know, different regions playing off against each other. Um, the deal with Twitch, though, gives them exclusive worldwide rights minus China to all the matches, uh, which are streaming in English, Korea, Korean, and French. Uh, China, though, is the country with the largest esports viewing audience. Mm. Uh, I don't know who they're partnered with with for China, but it's not Twitch. I mean, it would have um, to be one of, it would have to be a, something associated with the state or something yeah 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 well uh just because i was curious i took a look at the overwatchleague.com at the presentation and it's pretty epic uh i <laughs> i don't even care about physical sports <laughs> so uh it's interesting because it feels legit like a physical sport league site but um I don't know. I guess maybe because I actually like video games, it's it's uh, a yeah. little bit more interesting to me. Um, yeah, the Houston team is the Houston Outlaws, and their logo is pretty sweet. It's two guns and a star, and it's shaped kind of like uh, a longhorn skull. Yeah. And it makes me kind of want to like watch it, even though from what I took a glance at, Houston isn't doing so hot so far. But they've <laughs> only played like they've only played like a couple of matches or something, so it's not like you know this is. Um, a few matches into like a, a 40 match season or something. So, you know, they could turn around, but uh, I'm kind of disappointed with, or I, I know bothered with some of the team names though. I know some like, of them are really lame, like really lame. And that the, the logos are really uninspired and some of them are cool. Like it's yeah, just kind of San like Francisco a, a mixed bag. Are the, the shock. Is that, is that a, about fucking earthquakes? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Also, yeah. I feel like is it a like a rule that sports teams have to be pluralized? Like, I mean, here in Ohio, we effing pluralized a, a color. Right. Right. Well, the Dallas Fuel. What the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> okay, we, that's like a know. We, we like sure do have a lot accurate. of a the lot fuel. Of I, I mean, mean, yeah, I guess, but. Eh, yeah. that, that does not excite me. There's a football I mean, team called the Oilers. Either that or like the the Dallas Carbon footprint. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, um, so. I, I kind of like the London Spitfire, like the the London Spitfire yeah. and their uh, like the, their emblem. I think cool is my logo. favorite. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the Shanghai Dragons, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. No, so. this is like associating these with cities is good. That's uh, yeah. that, that that is a yeah. uh, a good thing because that appeals to the worst natures of mankind. Uh, and uh, brings a certain amount of regionalism to the tribalism associated with this. Yeah. Well, and then to... I am uh, kind of... Uh, I I do feel kind of bothered that uh, L.A. gets two, though. Why is that? I... Clearly, you know, if, if uh, you know, you're going to give two to some city, it should be the better city in uh, California. <laughs> Which is <laughs> this is nearly <laughs> San Francisco. Right. Say it, say it. Bakersfield. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. 
Yeah, but you're right. They've got the Valiant and the Gladiators, so they have yeah. two teams for whatever reason. But um, no, not I wonder the Valiant. If... Just the Valiant. The Valiant, yeah, Valiant. Yeah. Single. At least <laughs> one member of their team is Valiant. The trick is to know which one, because you get it wrong, and that guy's gonna come up behind you and take out your team when you least expect it. Not in the game either. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, oh, oh, and, and may it be known that when I dropped this story into the backstage chat, Dennis kind of spazzed out because he's been watching the league and jumped back into Overwatch as a result. So he's uh, really enthused. So yeah. just insert in your minds, listeners, insert Dennis chattering excitedly about it in the background here. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, point point of order. Um, in, in America, you watch Overwatch League on, um, Twitch in China, Twitch watches you. That's so dumb. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, yeah. No. Um, no, I, so I, at least in, um, in concept, I'm really excited about this. I, uh, but I checked it out before, um, before the, uh, show and, I found it almost unwatchable just because of the bunny hopping. That's a thing. That's a yeah. to the tr- tracer being a, po- a popular character yeah. and stuff like that. Well, no, it's it's literally everyone. It's not not so much like the the like um the like warping around stuff like that. It's literally just all of the characters at all times hitting the jump button. So yeah. it's like watching football if the cameraman was having a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's oh, safeguards man. for that. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I, I think it's either that or actually I think maybe part of it is um, I, I'm trying to track down if there's a way to watch it with a uh, wider field of view settings. I mean, it has to be... I mean, it has to be encoded in Twitch. Like, I, like it has to be like shared as a video. Like, you're watching it with whatever their field of view, field of view is by default. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think I would have thought they would like you know stream it with different you know you know not everyone on like Yield Square TV. Like, you would think there'd be a widescreen somewhere. But like, I I don't know. I think that's actually maybe what's causing is just the field of views zoomed in so much that. It makes me really, really motion sick. Yeah, I'm sympathetic to that. But so I'm, I'm hoping they maybe, maybe like figure that out because I mean the actual, um, the actual like gameplay and stuff like that seem good. It seems like maybe they've, uh, like I've, I stopped playing it myself like a, a while ago, and it seems like people are playing characters that like no one played at that point so if they've kind of fixed the meta and uh you know there's going to be more variety that seems kind of cool hmm. but how's uh how's the commentary um i i can't tell like i i think sports commentary is like among the most inane uh you know communication that humanity participates in okay wait, wait. sports or esports okay uh, sports just just in <laughs> so, general like i okay. i just i know like i feel like the the percentage of people saying dumb stuff okay I, well I, I i i will for for dennis's part he he is here with us in spirit i'm gonna read some of his commentary from his spazzing out in the, in the backstage channel he said that he watched most of the first week of the games the production quality especially the camera work and the casting was top notch um some of the matches were one-sided stomps but most were really exciting to watch a uh, very good first impression for the league, and he has high hopes for it ongoing. So his response to it is very different from David's jaded, hateful view. <laughs> well, I guess I wouldn't say so much. It's it's more just, I, I guess what I'm saying is when you ask, like, how is the commentary? It's like, well, yeah, yeah. sports commentary tends to be kind of dorky. like, right. And it, it definitely sounds like sports commentary. Okay. Which, yeah. I mean, I think it's a good thing probably yeah 
I've well, if that's been... what they're aiming for, then yeah. <laughs> I've been impressed by, like, Super Smash Brothers commentary and, like, Magic the Gathering commentary on, like, how knowledgeable the people doing the commentary are, because they're usually people who also play the game competitively. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was something I was surprised by, because, yeah, normally I, I kind of feel the same way, where sometimes you can hear commentators in, in, like, sports, physical sports, and it seems, like, kind of innocuous, like, oh, yeah, they just need to score more points. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, sure. But, like, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, there's you know, some analysis or art to it. I just yeah. good good sports casting is something that even though I don't really care about sports, I always like hearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, you that's uh, you. It's just like you always uh, watch the uh, Spanish language version of any soccer match, even if you don't speak Spanish. Yep, because it's <laughs> yeah. still uh, more entertaining. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, the real key, at least for me anyway, is that somebody who doesn't really watch sports very much, if they have good commentating, you know, going on, then uh, commentators, you know, working over the matches, then I will be more interested in watching them because their job is to get me engaged in what I'm looking at and to explain to me what's going on or, you know, recap for the people who know what the hell's going on, you know? Right. So, so, like, if they can manage to do all of that, then they are doing a good job. So. Yeah. You know. So w one thing I hope they don't replicate is like is the sports drama. Oh, I like that though. I like the stories. Oh, really? <laughs> well, not when I say drama, I don't so much mean like the actual like human interest stories, but I mean mean more the like like reality TV type stories. The you know who who has a beef with who and who's not oh. pulling their weight and, yeah. you know, you know yeah. those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at positives. <laughs> Be positives. It's nice. I'm looking at the divisions right now and because there's a Dallas team and there's a Houston team, but they're in two, they're fighting. two different divisions. <laughs> Dallas is, is Pacific and Houston is Atlantic. How does that make sense? It I don't know. <laughs> that's well, That's where the drawing line is, though, somewhere in between those two cities. I'm I'm okay. just I'm I'm just thinking well, that that just means exhibition matches. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that like um, among Houston cities, like okay, Houston usually says Austin's pretty cool, you know. But and and they even say San Antonio's pretty cool. But Houston has beef with Dallas for some reason, and like it's it's a mutual beef, and I don't know why. And whatever, it's just like this ongoing thing. Yeah. So. So, you know, like it, it's probably like that for reasons, you know, like trying to play off of that, that beef that, uh, you know, the two cities have with each other for whichever reason. Oh, but put them in the same division so they can duke it out. Yeah, right. Yeah. They should. But what well, is is Ohio State and uh, Michigan in, in the same division? Big Ten. Yeah. So I did notice uh, when I was I guess when I watched it before I pulled up on YouTube, and I did notice it seems like there's a lot of uh, like, I don't know, I guess like fan co or like whatever, you know, like professional streamer commentary on it, which mm -hmm. seems kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. You know, there was um, <laughs> there, I had another story that I was going to bring, but I, we don't have time for it. But it, it, maybe I'll bring it up later about like a new platform uh, for devs to interact with. Uh, and also pay basically advertising money to streamers and to get them more involved directly, uh, the devs with the gaming community via streaming and using that as their um, ad revenue, you know, like ad ad budget mm -hmm. kind of thing. But um, anyway, I f figured this one was the bigger deal. So my weird interest in, in random nitpicky things uh, <laughs> will have to have to wait for another day when there's not something. Quite as exciting as like Overwatch League happening. Yeah. So, um, we can do my story. Sure. So this is uh, con this continues in the uh, in the trend of so like whenever Teenage Dirtbags does an episode on a band, there's a likelihood that uh, one of the members of that band will die. This has <laughs> happened a couple times. Uh, and for for Woff, we'll do With a game. Great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> with, with, with Woff, we will do. When a should Justin be? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> with Woff, we will do a game, um, and the, the there will be like a remake or a sequel announced or something. This happened a couple times. We just did Dungeon Keeper, which is an interesting game yeah. by Bullfrog, right? Yeah. Turns out some of the people from Bullfrog, um, the people who made uh, specifically the people who did Theme Hospital, they're getting the band back together, and they're doing a spiritual successor to Theme Hospital. Oh. Yeah. It's called, well, uh, it's called Two Point Hospital. 
and it has a very cute uh, trailer out. Like they've got an announcement trailer that's kind of in the uh, the entire thing appears to be the, in this uh, kind of Wallace and Gromit style. Um, I forget the uh, forget the name of the of the studio that does that. Um, but yeah, there's kind of like, yeah, we're going to, we're, you know, we're going to do this. Sega is going to publish this. We wanted to, uh, kind of revisit this idea for a little while. Uh, it's going to be coming out in the next couple of years. Cool. Yeah. How did you segue from you guys being Grim Reapers to making a sequel of a video game? Oh no. I'm just saying like different shows have different things that they, that they spur. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also it's totally Wallace and Gromit looking. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. What is Theme Hospital, or what kind of game is it? Uh, so it's like a simulation or management game um, okay. where you're kind of like laying down rooms and designating like what their purposes are. So you want to have like an OR of a specific size, an emergency room of a, st- of a specific size, and like taking and you're hiring your staff and allocating them and making sure that they're not slacking off and stuff um, okay. in order to uh, run the run the hospital. Uh, it's it's you know it's called Theme Theme Hospital because it's part of like Theme Theme Park, which is something Bullfrog did before <laughs> you know as a kind of a i think they did that even before roller coaster tycoon was a thing um okay. but yeah i just i'm all about these little management kind of games right on yeah wonder if anyone's ever pitched a theme park hospital i feel <laughs> i feel like that's something america would have mm. the land the land of imp- impromptu dentistry yeah <laughs> So <laughs> I don't know that I expected this to spur an awful lot of conversation. I'm just excited. And I kind of want to go buy theme, po- theme hospital on GOG, but I don't know if it's on GOG or not. It is on GOG. It is. Oh, thank you. I believe so. <laughs> oh, David, you better hope it's on no, GOG. No, no, yeah, wanna... yeah. I, I just Whew. scrolled past it, and I, I, I was pretty sure that's why I saw, yes, it is on GOG. <laughs> okay. You, you don't Sorry, get my I, I was looking. For... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Uh, so that's mine. Uh, and, uh, David, you got a, you got a story? Um, so most of the other stories I, I was able to find were like crazy, crazy, um, oh, depressing and horrible. Okay. Uh, so, uh, have, have, have we talked at all about, uh, the Ugandan Knuckles thing? No, oh, geez. No, we no. haven't. It's <laughs> so, it's gross but, and shitty. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, yeah. the the story itself though is the uh, the Sonic Twitter accounts uh, response to it. Oh yeah, I saw that. That's really cool. Yeah. So so basically, this meme apparently there's a um, I don't know the name of the actual game off the top of my head, but apparently it's basically like uh, Second Life for VR. Yeah, it's like like and, a VR chat or something like that. Yeah, and people found this like uh, really, really like deformed uh, model of Knuckles, and yeah, it, you know, it's w- like a, on, a 3D version of an illustration made by a popular YouTuber uh, for a review that he was doing of Sonic Forces. I think it was. Okay. Yeah, and I I had watched it, and he wasn't like making like no, it was people the, people on the internet who took it and then did a bad with it it wasn't the right. original guy's fault no no right. so, like so, yeah so basically people somehow dubbed it ugandan knuckles and proceeded to go around um you know i guess talking in stereotypical like african accents and uh using the catchphrase let us show you the way to make the world a better place yeah it's a it's like a tagline or a or, or a popular line from a ugandan movie basically okay. going around speaking in that voice uh or doing uh just kind of really stereotypical like clicking language kind of stuff just just about as shitty as you could be about an entire continent without being our president right now <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> pretty much pretty much that's the probably the best way to put it yeah so, um, but in, in response to that, the uh, official Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account, which is generally awesome. It's pretty funny. Uh, it's one of those, like, uh, uh, really funny brand Twitters or social media accounts, mm-hmm. like Denny's's or... Um, Arby's. Is, yeah. Arby's moon, is moon, moon or pie. Wendy's. <laughs> moon Pie. You know, any of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, I think we covered it before. Like, my understanding is it's run by, like, some guy that is pretty much just some guy that works there yeah yeah but um so basically they posted a version of you know you know the meme where it's like they're like 
brain and then the big brain and that's like shining and like all enlightened and stuff like that and then the big brain on brad yeah no it's a like expanding brain or galaxy brain would be the name of the yeah yeah and so basically their version it starts with seeing a muck a knuckles meme becoming knuckles the tank driver respecting other uh then respecting other players while having fun as knuckles and finally actually donating to a ugandan charity yeah. uh, with the uh then the um actual tweet being let us show you the way to make the world a better place yeah and then a uh, link to a charity yeah so, nice. so it's like okay that's, that's actually <laughs> awesome addressing awesome. a shitty racist meme by encouraging people to give money to make a real difference in the area that is being depicted yeah. although i have to raise a point in that meme the the biggest brain, the the galaxy brain at the end, is almost is always the dumbest idea. So they really misunderstood or misrepresented. Yeah. They they presented the best idea as uh, as 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 what would be the worst in the format of the meme. I I appreciate yeah. the sentiment that they I, I get what they're going for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they um, almost yeah. understood the internet, but not quite. <laughs> oh well, no good good for them though. Good for them for yeah. like yeah. So. Not just not just ignoring it or not, uh, you know, leaning into it. There, there, there would be a real temptation to just be like, "Hey, this is our show you the way meme," and then it would be yeah. Yeah. awful. And I do sort of like that, like they they do kind of do the meme. Like I, I like that it wasn't just a like, "Hey, don't be awful, donate to charity." It's like this is you know kind of a, uh, I feel like a way to say like, "Hey, may, maybe not," but like. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's not just saying, like, hey, guys, cut it out. It's saying, right. Like, yeah, exactly. Just... Yeah. Good, good on you, brand. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Jala, what is the question that you ask the nice people? I asked, what's your favorite winter game? And I left it ambiguous for a reason, and I love how everybody picked a different way of interpreting it. <laughs> um, thanks to Graham M. for the original idea. Uh, he originally suggested a summer game months ago at the end of summer, um, so it was stuck in my multiplayer backlog for a while, and so I've adapted it to the snowpocalypse. Yeah. So That's a very good idea. Uh, thank you, Graham. I will get us started here with Jonathan, who writes... Anything that keeps me out of the cold, but shows me the beautiful snowy hills somewhere. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Winter theme levels. I love me a nice level. I need to update that playlist that I made of uh, of, of ice level music a couple of years back, uh, because a lot of those a lot of the, those videos have been pulled for copyright reasons. Yeah. You yeah. should update it. It yeah. would be nice. It would. That was fun. Uh, Let's see, David, what does Greg say? Greg says, as I mentioned in earlier multiplayer, skiing for the 2600 is a sentimental favorite of mine. Also, you spend a lot of time tromping around the frozen wasteland in Skyrim. And I always associate that as a winter game due to that. Plus, I played most of it in the winter. Yep, came out in November. Yep. Yeah, November 11th of 2011. Yep. Man, yep, I old. remember that. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. And that game still keeps on getting released. <laughs> it's weird, right? Yeah. I'm tempted still. to get it on Switch, but that's that would be a dumb idea. That would be a stupid idea. <laughs> he's, Aren't he's, he's dragons cold-blooded? Himself. Like, shouldn't that not work? Oh, they got fire inside them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the, the dragon is its own sun lamp. They just growl <laughs> a little bit to warm themselves up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, ben, what does Dylan I'll say? That. <laughs> Dylan says, new commenter, uh, my favorite game to play in the winter is probably Metro 2033. I got it a couple of years ago after I came out from a friend for Christmas and just fell in love with playing it. Uh, it's also in a certain type of winter in which uh, it's just a, a, something extra. Uh, I still sometimes come back to it uh, and Metro last light every year uh, once the snow starts to fall. Hmm. Uh, that is one of my big, like, white whale games. I like, you know, it's it's very much up my alley, but I've just never been able to get into it. It's in the same uh, zip code as Stalker. I mean, it's more right, linear exactly. than that is, but it's a similar, similar kind of idea. Yeah. yeah. Wow, Dylan, your name is very similar to, to that of a person I went to high school with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Huh. Um, let's see, Jella, what does Sam say? Sam says, while most levels, most of the levels are set in warmer places such as the Mediterranean or hell, either or, or maybe both, several cut scenes establish Bayonetta 2 as being set during the winter. So that's my answer. I cool. need, to, I need to, beat, to beat Bayonetta 2. I like the first one so much and I just did not get anywhere on the second. Mediterranean hell. <laughs> Uh, that's what we call food poisoning for meeting a gyro. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mike writes, I have two. Metal Gear Solid is so good at capturing the feeling of bitter cold through its crunchy footsteps, visible breath, and frozen rations. My other one is the Mass Effect series, which is my cozy winter game that I replay on a yearly basis. Cool. Mass Effect is a good answer. It's a game that feels very cold. Yeah, especially <laughs> when you go to Novaria. In Mass Effect 1. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> What's the wah, wah? <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> is it just, is it, was, was your point just Mass Effect bad? No, more, more just the, 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 uh, especially on the ice planet. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, David, what does Lindsay say? <laughs> Are you punishing him by making him read now? <laughs> no, no, it was it was just his turn. It was his turn. All right, all right. Sure. My, <laughs> my we have a lot of replies. <laughs> what? We have a lot of replies. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lindsay says Super Mario World is my favorite winter game. I got my SNES as Christmas for at Christmas as a kid, and it has always been my favorite game and console. Recently, I got the SNES Classic, and I'm replaying Mario with my son. Love the question. It was very heartwarming while thinking on my answer. And snow is finally falling. Yay! And here's a photo. And meanwhile, he was bitching to me about how cold it was like a week ago. <laughs> but now that it's snowing, it is satisfactory. I he, love he, it. He needed to have his heart warmed by the question right. before everything could That's be okay. True. <laughs> yeah, just like the dragons, which yeah. can uh -huh. survive in Skyrim because yeah. they can just growl, and it's fine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Super Mario World is a very good answer, especially if you play it with, uh, play it with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, ben, what does Jason say? Jason says, uh, Max Payne was a great winter game. The threat of a massive snowstorm parallels the ramping up uh, of the crazy painkiller-fueled rampage building as Max blasts his way through thugs. <laughs> yep. Just because I'm going to say this every time uh, this gets mentioned, you guys really, really need to cover Max Payne, too. It's so similar to the first one, though. In yeah. in the same way that something is, that is better than the first one in every way <laughs> is similar to the first one. It's, just like you always have to say that, I always have to say it's too similar to the first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jala, what does Graham say? The person who suggested the question. Yeah, that guy. That guy says, <laughs> when the Get snow him. is out. When the snow is out and it's getting colder, it's time to stay in and get comfy. Certain games are the comfiest, however. Many years back, my winter game was Dwarf Fortress. Something about that acoustic guitar soundtrack and simplistic graphics just feel cozy. cozy. Nowadays, it's building games like Children of the Nile or Banished or strategy games like Panzer Corps. Uh, the occasional CRPG like Pillars of Eternity sneaks in there, too. Hmm, I had never heard of Children of the Nile before. Neither had I. Yeah, it's hmm. from 2004. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, I can definitely get down with that. Justin, uh, let's see. Justin says, The Long Dark. I realize a survival game where not freezing to death is your main concern might seem masochistic to people that live in snowy areas, but I am a desert citizen and have no such qualms. I like to make tea while my character is warming up by a fire. <laughs> also that game is on like uh my wish list and has been on there for a while like i need to i want to play it sometime I, that one in kona that one's also like a, a survival adventure type game in the middle of snow water one oh, no, no it's snow. snow yeah I, I played the long dark back um back before i had a uh uh oh my gosh a, a campaign like when mm -hmm. it was when it was still in early access and it's a beautiful ah, okay. beautiful game um i might need to go mm -hmm. back to it now that it's uh 
now that it's you know wide open or it's getting yeah. finished that's what i mean not gonna lie uh when justin describes himself as a de- desert citizen i cannot help but imagining him just like fighting off sand people and jawas <laughs> i picture him being a villager in fallout yeah. i think about mad max but whatever mm, yeah now, ben, if what we do you could think? Match, mash up all of these things, we would have a great game. <laughs> or at least yeah. a t shirt you could sell. Right. <laughs> um, David, what does Gordon say? Gordon says, I overwinter at my father in law's in an internet black spot. It's an opportunity to catch up on the puzzlers that can run on my crap laptop. Basically, anything by Zachtronics. Crap top. Sorry, I knew one of us was going to say it, uh, and Mm -hmm. I needed to be the one who said it. First. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Zachtronics is good. Oh, I picked up Opus Magnum on a recent sale. Yeah, did you see the thing with, uh, they got, like, rejected by GOG? Yeah, they got booted by GOG, and there's no apparent reason why. And there might have been been an update, but it has to be a misunderstanding. It has to be. Well, there's nothing That's... objectionable uh, objectionable about the game. Well, and the yeah, weird yeah. thing is that, like, they have other games on there. Yeah. Who knows? Hopefully yeah. it gets worked out. Um, Let's see. Ben, what does Noah say? Noah says, uh, my mind went uh, first to a more recent one, Until Dawn. Not exactly the most engaging gameplay-wise, uh, but I had a blast playing this while my roommate and girlfriend watched. It encourages you to gossip about the characters and their flaws. Also, everyone always has their own impassioned suggestions for what you should be doing uh, during decision-making portions. The psychologi- psychologist segments uh, that are talking to the player also act as a sort of party game uh, where you get to learn more about each other's fears. Needless to say, I think the game is best enjoyed in groups. Uh, shout out to the winter section in The Last of Us, which was a nice change of pace and stakes. Yeah. Both of those are very good answers. I I always forget about that winter section. In The Last of Us? Yeah, yeah, yeah where you're hunting the deer. Yeah, it's uh, fucking, okay. it's yeah. fucking beautiful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and I, I, so while you were reading that, I was thinking, has it been long enough since I played Until Dawn that I could go back and enjoy playing through it again? Because that's a really fun game. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching you play it, I think, the first time. <laughs> two years ago or so yeah year uh, two ago i got two people out alive <laughs> <laughs> that's a, i think that's that a... was like i think that was like one of the first games that i was just so irritated by the characters that i was just like i can't watch this cold goodbye oh you made, you made a show <laughs> of it is what you did <laughs> i totally did i was just like this is ridiculous <laughs> they're they are purposely written dumb yeah and, yeah is, 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 is that the one that uh kind of goes off the rail eventually with the the yep. winter yep. stuff and the... yeah yeah yep i don't want that you're getting really close to revealing what the twist is yeah yeah exactly yeah. that's that's i was being vague yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i i would like to go back and at least try playing a little bit of that see if it still uh see if it still hooks me because this is a short game it's like a it's like a four-hour game <laughs> if all your characters die it is yeah <laughs> Okay. Jeez. Sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Wait, uh, so would, would that count as a successful speed run? <laughs> as long as it's not any percent. Um, yeah. It, let's see. Jala, what does David say? David says, winter and CRPGs go together like hot chocolate and tiny marshmallows. Working on Divinity OS right now. So that's my answer. Yeah, there's a reason why we do the uh, why we do the winter RPGs in uh, winter. I am totally down with the RPGs in winter. So yeah, everything slows down. It's time for thoughtful contemplation. Actually, mostly I'm just fucking tired from training all all year, and like that's my okay. I'm gonna lay in bed and just not do anything very exciting. There could be many that requires reasons. twitch twitch <laughs> reflexes or anything. I'm just gonna <laughs> lay here. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's see. Franz says. Judging by Kanehurst Castle, Bloodborne takes place in the freezing cold, so that's a no-brainer. Also a good one. Kanehurst is such a good level. How long has Franz been a Lovecraftian whore? What do you mean? (laughs) Well, (laughs) forever, but like since his uh, profile picture changed, that was uh, New Year's Eve, it looks like. Hmm. 
Yeah, I I didn't notice the tentacles when it was uh, when it was just a a little you know the little icon. That's that's how they get you. No, I I support <laughs> that picture. <laughs> it's very good, David. What does Chase say? Right about this time of year, I give XCOM Enemy Unknown a go. I'm not very good and tend to get the game into an unwinnable state, but I get farther every year. The game is the perfect blend of fiddly systems and game grid style playing that is perfect for a cup of coffee, a podcast backlog, and heavy snowfall. Fiddly bits! It has <laughs> fiddly bits! Yes! Do any of the uh, XCOM games like ever get into like win- winter settings or Arctic settings or do anything with that? Ben? There's one fishery level that like, feels cold, but that's probably because <laughs> of the difficulty as much as anything else. I feel like that could be an interesting Twitch. Uh, Twitch? Twist, like a, an XCOM game where if you stay behind cover too much, your guys start getting hypothermia. Hmm. hmm. A little bit of a map variant, yeah. Yeah. That, that may be a thing in the old ones. I just don't know. Me yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, ben, what does Eric say? Uh, Eric says, I love Snowboard Kids, even the weird DS one, but the original one had a great soundtrack and was a repeat rental for me when I was a kid. Hmm. How did how did uh, combat race, racing as a genre just die? I think it had its moment and, and knew when it needed to go away. I feel like that is still. I I feel like that is an innately great genre. Yeah, I mean, like, um, there's still Mario Kart. Yeah, there's Mario yeah. Kart. Uh, like they they tried. Like there was a new Twisted Metal, and it didn't go anywhere. Like, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I I don't know. I I feel like I'm. I'm not an angsty teenager enough to be into Twisted Metal. Yeah. I mean, Grid is pretty good, but that came out in 2011, uh, oh, which was last. <laughs> that's the Demolition Derby one? No, no. That one's uh, that one's more of like a, like a futuristic Mario Kart kind of thing. Okay. Wasn't yeah. there a Demolition Derby one that came out recently? Not that I have no idea. I don't know. Anyways. Jala, what does John say? John says, I live in, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, anything involving couch multiplayer, as no one wants to be cold and alone, be it of a competitive nature or a cooperative nature. Personal choice goes to fighting games. Keeps the blood running hot and salty. I was looking at the wrong John, just for reference. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. I can see that. Um, let's see. An- Anji? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, but man, I really don't know that. Don't know how to pronounce that name. I kind of want it to be Auntie Bellin, though. Like, <laughs> I, I, I feel like that would be an amazing name for some sort yeah. of superhero. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Angie or Angie, or uh, I apologize if I get, if I get that incorrect. Uh, the Happy Land Adventures Christmas Edition game gave me some nice memories during winter time uh, when it was too cold to go outside. This was the first game I completed later in life. Uh, I completed the original Happy Land Adventures game. I have no idea what Happy Land Adventures is. Yeah, I completely... Google will know. Oh, it's like a... um, Huh, it's like a, like, like a freeware DOS uh, platform game. Like Asset Collector. Oh, yeah, like a... Like there a, it is. Yeah. Um, Com- Commander Keen? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, more more, more tiley, I think. Yeah, and they they've got the yeah. uh, the the holiday expansion pack. They they, nice. they 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 pulled the Christmas nights. Yes, Christmas nights is cool. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> that, that was very funny. Like the 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 joke wasn't, but the way your voice cracked when you were doing the fake laugh was. Yes. <laughs> that wasn't mean. Come on, uh, <laughs> David. What does uh, what does Jonathan say? Jonathan says, I live in a state that's just hot and never sees snow. So I'm going another way and saying Winter Assault expansion from Dawn of War. It's the best I could do. <laughs> Makes sense. Dawn of War, that's the Warhammer one. That's kind of in mm-hmm. the, oh gosh, not the Call of Heroes, whatever it is. Company of Heroes style. Yeah. That's the that's Even... one that does a little bit of grand strategy, right? Maybe right like it's more about like managing cover and line and line of sight. I think it goes the other way. It's like down to like micro, 
like oh, okay. management. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then rounding everything out, Ben, what does Adam say? Adam says, I love the snowboarding mini game in Final Fantasy VII. I put so much time into that. Uh, unlock the time attack mode and getting so much speed and doing big flips. Yeah. Yeah, the the entire. I, an, I I remember having anxiety about that particular mini game. Like, <laughs> I was not very good at it, or I was convinced that I was not good at it, or that I didn't like it. I'm not sure what exactly the deal was. Yeah. But I haven't played it since like I don't know 20 years ago or however the hell long it was mm-hmm. that that game came out. Yeah. Was there like a reason you're snowboarding in the game, or is it just kind of a diversion? Um, in the story, it's you. Uh, it's you and your team escaping uh, from a snowy town and riding down into the uh, giant glacier at the at the North Pole, um, and then you can go back and do it uh, in the Gold Saucer. It's unlocked as a as an arcade game. I would actually okay. uh, expand this to say the entire Gold Saucer. Cause... The whole Gold Saucer is awesome. Yeah, I just remember the you know the winter after that came out. Uh, spending a lot of time doing that like it was like i'm going to i'm going to an arcade but it's in a video game itself it's games on games um yeah so thank you everybody let's do ours uh i don't have a particular answer for this i just have an anecdote back in 2005 so this was like january or february of 2005 ohio got its worst ice storm of many many years um like like we haven't had like there, there wasn't one for many years before that, and there hasn't been one as bad as that since. Uh, we were out of school, David, if you'll remember, for like like ten days or something like that. We, yeah. we, we didn't have any power for five um, mm-hmm. at my house anyway, and um, I remember like we had to like we went and lived at the church for a little bit because the entire like you know there was no heat at the house. The church had the the church had water. The church had heat. The church had electricity. Um, you know, which meant like, hey, guess guess who's taking a bath in a in a church sink? Cole has, um, you know, stuff like that. But I took my PC out there, my, my uh, newly acquired gaming PC, um, and hooked it up to a TV and spent uh, the couple nights that we stayed there playing Far Cry, the original Far Cry, not the open world one, just like the big level tropical one. And it was a nice <laughs> little uh, nice little contrast between those two. <laughs> yeah. So. Feeling I'll skanky, say. living in a church, gunning down people in a tropical paradise. <laughs> yeah. David, how about you? Ah, that that's tough. Like I I would say I I want to say the thing, except that the game wasn't that good. Right. So if this was about movies, it would be the thing. <laughs> right. Oh um, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, I don't I don't know. Um at least, like, a recent one that comes to mind is, um, oh, what is it? Tom Clancy's The Division is, I, I don't know, kind of, kind of the meta story for, like, why, uh, you know, everything's so jacked up and no one's sending in help is that there's this, like, you know, one century blizzard that's shut down New York. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a lot like Spec Ops except snow instead of sand. Right. Um, and it does some really good uh, sequences of whiteouts. Um, I haven't gotten to play it, but apparently the expansion basically does um, oh, players unknowns battlegrounds, except um, you know with hypothermia effects. So you have to like periodically um, spend time near a source of heat, such as a fire, or you'll freeze to death. And it's apparently really, really good. Cool. But, yeah. yeah. Tom Clancy's The Division. Um, ben, how about you? Uh, I'll say 1080, the snowboarding game for Nintendo out of oh, nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll also say the snow level in Modern Warfare 2, which is awesome. Hmm. What's the context? Is that like in Russia? or? Yeah, you start out like mountain climbing, and then you get this weird uh, like Michael bay thing, like a heartbeat sensor. That uh, you used to shoot a bunch of people on like a stealth mission, and then you go out on snowmobiles, kind of like the speed chase scene in Endor in mm. Star Wars. And then the storyline falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> he really likes that game, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Jala, how about you? Yeah, so like I said, I usually end up indulging in some kind of 
uh, RPG or other during wintertime. Uh, mostly because I just want to lay in my bed and not be on my feet because this is like that that's the most intense part of my training and then the actual marathon. And then for me, like running into um, spring, I'm going to have a lot more stuff going on. So, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) RPG time is extended this year. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, otherwise, if you want to talk about like literally a level that looks like winter, um, recently when I was playing Vermintide, uh, that snow level that was in there was really memorable. And I was like, oh, hey, this is appropriate for some of these people who are out in the middle of this, you know, bomb cyclone nonsense. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, like, uh, otherwise when I was younger, Christmas nights was always a thing that I would like to play. And then, um, Guild Wars and Guild Wars two, they have special winter time events. And that's usually when a lot of people would log back in because they would have some time because stuff would slow down during the holidays and then they'd pop back up again. And then I just kind of like reunite with all the people I was gaming with before. Hmm. So, you know, Get so that would be a the thing. Dole Yaks. Yes. The Dole Yaks. I love Dole Yaks. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's my answer. Cool. Yeah. Well, I feel a little bit warmer now and not just because <laughs> I turned the fan down a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Graham, for suggesting the question. Thank you, Jolla, for putting it up. If you would like to um, participate in these, they go up on our Facebook page on Tuesday afternoons. That's facebook.com slash the level podcast. The grind. Now it is time for the grind, where we talk about the things we have been playing over the past period of time or so. David, you've been away. Um, what have you been playing? Sure. Um, I've been playing a ton of Sundered. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So How's I, that I, going? It's uh, growing, growing pretty well, actually. I'm I'm on the um, the final regular boss. So um, I, according to the game, I'm at ninety one percent. So um, are you guys fam- familiar with this? So Jala has mentioned it. She played a preview of it or brought it to our attention a few months back. Okay. Yeah, okay. I yeah, I I originally was watching that game because of PAX South last year. So it's been a while that I was looking at it, but I still haven't purchased it slash played it. So we should we should give a, a kind of a rundown so people know what we're talking about because it did just sure. come out recently. Sure. So it's uh basically it's a Metroidvania um and it's uh kind of the plot line is that you play as I think it's pronounced like Eshi, S, uh, who's a uh, oh kind of this desert wanderer who comes upon these ruins and tumbles down inside and becomes trapped. And uh, you basically uncover this kind of uh, Lovecraftian horror that you have to um, you know defeat in order to escape. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got a really neat, um, really neat art style. It's all, um, hand drawn. It's like pen and ink. Um, yeah. 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 And, um, you know, it's especially, um, I really like, uh, there's when it does some of the like fire and smoke effects, it really has a neat look. It kind of reminds me of, um, you know, like the, um, when we were kids, the the kind of animated, like made for TV, um, fantasy uh, movies. Yeah. Um, I forget any of their names, but uh, you know, it kind of has that sort of look a little bit. Yeah. Um, make sure you watch videos of this and not just like stills. It's really impressive in stills, but like the animation mm-hmm. matches the quality of the assets, which is yeah. really fucking rare. And like the yeah. only game I've seen that do that do th- do that recently is Hollow Knight. Like yeah. Cuphead. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, Cuphead and, as well. Uh, yeah. You know, has, I would say, some similarities to Hollow Knight in terms... Well, I mean, I guess they're both kind of Metroidvanias, but mm-hmm. um, one, one of the other neat things that goes along with that is the controls on it. Um, the way it feels are really, really good. Um, it does a really good job... Um, you know, there's... There's a whole bunch of acrobatic, uh, you know, and kind of uh, traversal uh, moves you start with and then get over the game and course of the game. And it does a really good job where, you know, almost none of them have um, like dead zones. So like 
in some games, you know, if you do like a roll at the end of the roll, you'll kind of be frozen in place for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in this, it doesn't really do that. So it gives the game a really, really, um, um, a really fast kind of slick feeling. Uh, the, the other thing that's kind of cool with that is, um, there's kind of a big emphasis on, um, it actually sort of has a physics system where, um, you'll actually, you know, if, as long as you're airborne, you'll, um, keep the momentum of any moves you, uh, you do. Hmm. So, uh, you can do things like, uh, you know, eventually you'll get a, uh, grappling hook and you can use that to like oh, slingshot yourself. But purchased yeah ah. so uh yeah so it's uh you know it feels really good um has a pretty good combat system the the big um kind of criticism people make is um the way enemy spawning works is basically um periodically and it seems like it's sort of some sort of combination of like being timed and also like how much distance you cover Basically, some sort of alarm will go off depending on the stage you're in. It will sound different, and enemies will start spawning and attacking you. Hmm. And it, it can sometimes get a little frustrating because uh, you know it's kind of you know endless waves of enemies. Although I feel like part of what you kind of learn is just there's a certain degree to which you're not necessarily supposed to try to kill literally everything you see. Right, right. It's about you know, you're you're given those traversal kind of skills, so you can get over that. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, so I mean, overall, it's uh, you know, it's not too bad. Um, one of the other things that I think is kind of neat is um, it does an interesting setup where um, you know, as you explore, you open a you know, you map out um, kind of large sections of the map, kind of large you know, blocks of rooms. And those will then always be revealed on your map and they're always, uh, you know, connect up the same in the same position. But then within one of those rooms, the actual like architecture that makes it up is, um, is, uh, I don't know if it's truly procedurally generated, but it changes each time. Okay. And so that, that seems like a really reasonable way to kind of, um, you know, get the, you know, kind of roguelike type feeling while still having it be fairly bespoke. Right. Yeah. So, um, I'd be very curious to see what amount of procedural, uh, generation has done with that because that, that art style pretty much screams like we agonized over every pixel of this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I definitely think like there's definitely some really strong, they do a lot of really strong work with like the, uh, you know, parallax scroll backgrounds and, you know, stuff like that, um, especially some of the later areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say my my one real complaint with it is that, unfortunately, I think the uh, later stages are um, are kind of some of the weaker ones. Mm -hmm. And in, in particular, I'm on the, uh, you know, kind of, the, like I said, the last regular boss fight, and it's just incredibly frustrating. Yeah. Because uh, ba mm. basically, um, your some of your most effective traversal techniques, like the um, in particular the grappling hook, uh, can be interrupted if you take damage. Mm -hmm. And most of the boss fights basically revolve around like, you know, the boss is weak, has a certain weak point, and usually it's you know moving around and uh, you know generally fairly high off the ground. So you have mm -hmm. to like platform up to it or, you know, things like that. Um, and the problem is the final boss fight, um, you know, you have to use these traversal moves, but then uh, it just throws so many um, attacks at you that will knock you back down that often there are situations where like I'd get hit by an attack and then there wouldn't be any way for me to get out of the way of the rest of them. Right. A little, so little, that, bit, a little bit of a salt and sanctuary problem. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little frustrating. I think it's just, you know, a little bit maybe too bad that, um, oh, that that's kind of 
the note is probably going to end on. Oh, I, I guess mm. I should say uh, one, one thing that's ki kind of neat is, uh, you know, whenever you beat a boss or, you know, at various other points, you get a shard and you can basically either use those to um, kind of ally with the, uh, you know, channel the Lovecraftian horrors and uh, uh, corrupt one of your uh, abilities that basically makes your traversal abilities better. Or you can use it to, or you can destroy it in order to um, unlock a um, new, uh, like, technology upgrade um, that focuses around fighting the enemies. Okay. And that's kind of how they do the, you know, different multiple endings and different storylines, stuff like that. But that's just kind of cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. It's really cool. Um, I, you know, I guess... Uh, maybe this is kind of a stereotypical thing to say, but, you know, um, it's, you know, a game with a, uh, you know, uh, female protagonist that's uh, not Caucasian. Cool. Um, granted, there's not a lot of backstory or personality, but still, that's cool to see. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not like a Western setting. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it's really cool. Like, would you say, like, how would you rate the difficulty of this? Like, is it... A game where you're going to be pulling your hair out over it, or is it kind of like leading you along a little bit? Sure. Um, I would say. Is it like Dark Souls, or is it like Light Souls? <laughs> Jeez, man. Maybe, maybe <laughs> some Dark Souls. No. Um, I I would say you know it kind of when you first start off, uh, and before you get used to it, and especially get some abilities under your belts, uh, the waves of enemies are a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like you really hit a stride and, you know, it's challenging, you know, I died, but it tended to be, you know, each run I w would accomplish something. And there was kind of a, um, you know, constant progression. And then I would say the, the last area got a little bit frustrating and this last boss is getting really frustrating. Uh, although, I mean... You know, obviously the 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 end should be more difficult, so that's not unforgivable. But no, I I think it's a pretty pretty good progression. I do like uh one of the uh kind of you know they have the loading screen tool tips, and one of them is just your pro your progression should be non linear. Hmm. It's like okay, <laughs> we're, we're doubling down on this. Nice. Well, cool. I'm happy to hear that that it, a that's out. B you played it. C you liked it. And D it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, other than that, the only real thing um, played some more River City Ransom. Uh, nothing really too much to write home about. Although I do feel I need to inform you that uh, not only do you apparently uh, just chomp down and eat, uh, you know any drinks you buy whole but the same is apparently true when you uh buy uh video games and books and stuff <laughs> and it's kind of funny because they literally like don't even bother to change the text from like you ate that, <laughs> that's that's very funny and in keeping with the uh with the rest of stuff yeah that's that's very good <laughs> it's also i'd be interested to know <sighs> I can't kind of touch on this last time, but how much this was true to the original versus being self-aware, like a lot of the, um, in particular, those ones, a lot of the like books and, uh, oh, games and stuff like that are kind of pop culture references. They're very kind of self-aware. Um, I, or, or maybe not self-aware, but you know, I, I kind of call out. It's like what, one of them is like called like, whips and vampires mm -hmm. stuff like that so i i don't know if that's something that was in the original but it, but they're kind of entertaining yeah it sounds like they're doing like a castlevania thing yep nice and is that all yep that's all yeah i i i would like <laughs> basically the coffee thing was my only question about the uh about river city ransom and uh you, <laughs> you answered that so <laughs> good to know uh, ben, how about you? What you been playing? All right. So I got uh, the majority is like non video game stuff, but stuff I just will casually mention. Um, 
over the weekend was the uh, pre-release for Magic. So they uh, they released the new set. So they had like uh, events for that. So I went to two events for that. Um, one was just uh, it was a midnight release, which I had never gone to before. But like uh, on Friday night at midnight, they'll release the set and you can do you do a four round tournament. Um, and so I think there were 12 people that showed up to the game store that I typically go to. Hmm. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Uh I hadn't like it makes me realize how much I plan on going to bed early on Friday nights because that was a uh, very jolting <laughs> to my uh, my bodily functions and just like I don't know I, was, I just felt very weird the rest of the weekend. Uh, I should be waking but... up for a glass of water at this point. <laughs> but it was it was a lot of fun though. Uh, the new set's interesting. Uh, I don't know how much to talk about it just because I think I'm the only one who plays it. Is but, this uh... the chaotic one? Is this like the the one that's meant to shake up metas? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's an, uh, so it's a, a secondary expansion to the previous block and I, the previous block, we did a news around like a while ago where they were doing like uh geocaching for, cause it was like an explorer themed set. Um, so it's just an expansion on that basically and adds to the tribes. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, besides that, I also got to play a board game over the weekend on uh Sunday. We played a five player game of twilight Imperium. Oh, yeah. Which I th- think I mentioned maybe last week. It's like a kind of like a, a daunting, like six to seven hour long game. Uh, that's just like it has a lot of uh, notoriety around it for being like a very long game, but it's like a space type game. Uh, yeah, where people are. You've spoken about it before. Um, and I think the, the, the summation that was given either on the or off was that this is the board game that thinks it's a video game. Yeah. 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 It's very similar to like Civilization kind of. Uh, different factions with different abilities Which is a video game that thinks it's a board game <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and i think i played this game once when i was in cincinnati so i probably talked about it already mm-hmm. um but we actually played a full game and got to finish it this time so i was happy about that okay um uh, but in terms of video game stuff uh i continued playing uh the evil within 2 um so i've gotten farther in mm. that it's still like a pretty solid game um you don't there's sound like, so convinced, though. <laughs> there's there's definitely, like, I think I would probably like it more if I played it, like, on easy mode. There's a few points where it's, like, a little bit annoying, uh, where it's just, like, uh, certain creatures you kind of, like, instantly die to, or certain creatures where it's, like, you can either try and uh, sneak around them, or you can kill them, but it'll require, like, all of your ammo, and you'll be completely depleted afterwards. Um, oh, you can't, like... Um... You can't sneak kill everything? Uh, there's some monsters you cannot sneak kill. I do not that believe. That is unfortunate. And also, like, situations probably where you can't sneak kill somebody without alerting. Mm-hmm. Like, like the at least in the mm-hmm. Evil Within 1, the sneak kills ended up being, like, this is a way to open an encounter. Yeah. yeah. A, lot of the, a lot of the time, unless it was specifically designed for you to ghost, ghost a particular section. Yeah, that's kind of how it is here, too. Like, especially with, like, kind of, like, mob fights where there's, like, four or five people. It's like you might be able to sneak kill the first two, but then you have to actually, like, go guns blazing on the last few people. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that part's still fun. I mean, the environment's still fun. Uh, like, they do a good job of, like, uh, mixing it up where, like, int- uh, like having basically, like, surprise haunted houses, like, uh, <laughs> dotted throughout the game. Um, and But then also just having, like, really cool kind of, like, uh, mini open world areas that you can kind of explore on your own and just find a lot of, like, little, like, nuggets of interesting things. Um, yeah, it's just the only downside is there's certain, certain, like, boss battles that they'll put you in that are, like, I don't know what the right, right word is, just, like, maybe not fun or, like... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I like how you're trying to be so diplomatic about that. I mean, I I, I mean, I like the game despite this. Like, right. uh, but there's a few there's a few points where it's kind of a slog to get through. So yeah, yeah. Do they? Is there ever any payoff to how just nonsense its uh, premise is? Uh, I mean, I would say the nonsense itself is the payoff. Maybe. Yeah. Um. Uh, I know, like the, I don't, uh, I, I don't think this is, I don't. Hopefully, this is not a spoiler, but it's like the theme of the bad guy is like photography, and so there's like a lot of like kind of cool things they do with like cameras and photography in the game that tie into like it being also horror too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that that was actually like really creative. Um, 
Yeah. I just, but like with the, the, the whole like matrix thing, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an essay question that kind of bounces off of that. Prepare for me to ramble for just a second. One of the things that bothered me about the first one when I played it, aside from like the difficulty instant death stuff, like that's me mechanical, whatever, but from a thematic kind of standpoint, the idea that all of this was, you know, a battle inside somebody's demented mind and anything could shift at any time led to this kind of like massive disparity between the set pieces like oh now i'm in a butcher's house and now i'm in this ancient village and now i'm in a city that's falling apart like there was mm -hmm. no like sense of sense of place or continuity or like weight anything that happened it just kind of felt like this was makami saying like hey wouldn't it be cool if and then you were playing the if like yeah, does, yeah, yeah. does the open world give any kind of a kind of weight or continuity to stuff or does it continue to be like a mishmash hodgepodge and do you think that harms it uh, it sounds like maybe it's like slightly more coherent than the first one. I haven't played the first one, right. so just I'm just judging it based on the uh, description because it at least requires everything to be connected somehow to this world. But that said, like usually it's like enter into this house and then this crazy thing happens and you go to this kind of like off the wall set yeah. or like enter this house and then this thing happens and you go to this like off the wall type thing. Um, so it's it's probably still does some of the, the same things that you're talking about where it's like, wouldn't it be cool if we had this? But the thing is, is a lot of times it's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. Yes, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> and let me show I just you. Always wonder like they're, they're all like, uh, you know, Oh, you know, when, when we go into this, you know, computer world all the all these you know monsters and stuff start killing people it's like have you ever considered just not <laughs> but they have to go over them they have to find the main bad guy because he's doing bad stuff to people's brains he has to go in there because his like, daughter's there a cherry bomb down the shaft or something his, his, his daughter's in there he's got to save his daughter yeah it's the tom jane motivation <laughs> i just want my kids back <laughs> I, I feel i feel like i feel like uh Silent Hill has taught us that that never ends well. <laughs> it ends at a party, like a cult party or something. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I still enjoy the game. I just think there's like, um, like so for example, there's like one set piece where uh, it it kind of disarms you in a certain way, um, where you have to approach an enemy that you're not used to. Um, and it was great because like this is typically an enemy I would either run and avoid or like shoot with a sniper rifle from afar. Um, so it was great because it taught you like, okay, this is how the enemy works. Like, this is how you can try and kill it. But then this is kind of like the risk reward of it. And so like, that was like a great teaching moment, but it was like several hours after they had introduced the enemy, you oh, know? Geez. Um, so I think like there could be like some small improvements with like how they introduce characters and like how they teach you how to handle mm -hmm. them instead of like just throwing you into it and letting you figure it out. Um, but that said i mean it's still i don't know i still have a hard time criticizing the game i, I think I, I do think it's like a pretty fun game to play and it's really polished i think there's a lot of good ideas in it um they're just there are a couple of annoying parts but there's a lot of cool parts too so yeah yeah nice and it's, yeah. it's fun at least for a time before that stuff starts great on you right uh it's just you know it's it's a uh, salt and pepper there's yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good moments and a lot of bad moments. So. Yeah. Not bad moments, but just frustrating moments. But if say you're like really good at the game, then it's not even a problem anyway. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. You can rise to it. So just as kind of a point of four, I was uh, checking the price to see uh, see how uh, how much Evil Within 2 is. And apparently Sundered is half off uh, today. So Oh, yeah. yeah I... That is a thing. <laughs> you, you said grappling hook and I pulled the trigger. Like I got I to gotta, I gotta play Cuphead <laughs> first, but... Uh, but yeah, that's uh... a. <laughs> you... um, sorry. <laughs> I want to hear about Cuphead when you have played it. Yeah. Oh, Ben's talked about it. He likes it. It's good. Ben, <laughs> ben, ben got it for me for Christmas, and I'm excited to play nice. it. Nice. Are you guys going to uh, co op it? Uh, pro... Can you? Pro... Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Although apparently I've heard it's supposed to actually be harder on co op mode. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I want to play. I would like it. Uh, I would like it to be not hard, please. I just want to see the pretty pictures move. <laughs> um, you play anything else, Moon? Uh, that's it. There's Rocket League and stuff, but that's it. <laughs> gotcha. Um, Jala, how's Persona going? 
uh, Persona's a thing. So I uh, finished the dungeon that I was on. I went back to town for a few days. I found out that I can date one of the girls in my party, whoever I want, uh, and I get to the right social link level for. Uh Uh, I can't date the dudes, though, which is heartbreaking because the main guy really just needs to date Yosuke for real. Like... (laughs) I've, I've been going on about that like every single time I've been on this talking about this game, but for real, like from the very beginning of this this game, it's just like so obvious. So <laughs> anyway, um, I just unlocked the social link with Naoto, the last of my party members, but I may not have enough time to max that out, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm real close to having the other members of my team maxed out, though. Like they're all at like uh, out of ten, they're at like. Uh, I think one of them's at eight and the others are all at nine. So I just have to spend time with them one more time and then they will be, will be mine. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the boss in heaven, the, the dungeon I was on, uh, was a breeze. And apparently it's a, supposed to be a really hard boss, but it was not a big deal for me. Is that the one that um, everybody was bracing you for? Yeah, the other one. Because I the, the one that I got stuck on before was the hard boss... Uh, you know, that is the first of the the difficult ones. And this one, I think, is the one that everybody was saying, oh, God, there's there's another one that's going to be difficult. Uh, well, basically, my trumpeter persona, the one that I mentioned last time that took six other personas in order to make. <laughs> it was a whole, that, that, a whole like, Knights of the Round quest to do. Yeah, it was, because, like, that's how I, gr- you know, I was grinding uh, to get the personas, specific personas needed to make this trumpeter, and that's, like, how I tolerated it, you know, <laughs> to tolerated the grinding I needed to get past that part of the game. <laughs> and uh, anyway, like, this particular persona happens to have a skill called debilitate which lowers the enemy attack defense and hit evasion rate all in one go and uh, this persona also lacks a specific elemental weakness and um, you know some of the attacks even will reflect or uh, will heal me so Mm -hmm. Um, even though this boss kept on trying to use elemental attacks on me and then even took my party members who all started using their elemental attacks on me, it was kind of like to no end. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. But then also uh, I got the characters up to a level high enough that um, Rise, which is kind of like your support character who also is like chattering at you the entire battle, which gets annoying after a while, right. uh, she started popping out uh, almost every other turn to buff my party and so the enemy you know like the the boss would waste a turn just trying to debuff me okay. so then like i i just got in some free hits while you know like nice. then Rise would pop out again and then buff me again and then the <laughs> you know there goes the boss like you know trying to debuff me again so it wasn't a big deal um and i also started the fight with a persona that automatically confers buffs to the entire party so like i just i just like was set up already for this boss before i even came across it um i do so much damage at this point that i didn't have to use any items and i only had to use a general group heal that wasn't even the strongest version but just like the medium version of the healing spell just like a couple of times so it wasn't a big deal. Like it really was not a big deal. So, um, yeah, if that was if that was the boss that everybody was worried about, and you know, because a, a couple of people were like, "Oh, that was a really hard boss for me." Yeah. Um, you know, like, well, I if that was it, then I'm good to go for the. There's there should be. I think they said at least one more dungeon. So I'm not done with the game yet. There's still more to it. I'm in 72 hours, my dudes. Wow. So, so this is like longer than I have played like most video games on Steam. I want to say like <laughs> I, I am literally gonna pull up my Steam right now so I can check and see how many <laughs> hours like my max max playtime is because I it's, really don't play games for very long. I, I have a revolving door. Once I'm done with you, you're out the door. You know? It's very while you're looking at that. It's very funny that you did the exact same thing with Persona Four that you did with Final Fantasy Tactics, which was level 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 in anticipation of something being really hard and then just like breezing through it like oh i actually no, i <laughs> good i did not i did not level up in order to fight this boss i was just wandering around through the dungeon just because i felt like wandering around in the dungeon uh, okay so okay so on on steam of all of my billions of games 
190 hours of Resident Evil 6. Okay. 115 <laughs> hours of Skyrim. And then after that, it drops off. Like, that. that's already a large drop, 190 to 115. Right. The next one is Left 4 Dead 2 with 49 hours. So <laughs> that's, like, another big, big, big drop. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically two games on steam have i played longer than i have played persona so yeah. this is so like you're, a, you're just taking a run a run and leap at that curve yeah so so anyway um that's so, what's going on with persona so you've posted a couple of uh screenshots of this i've been posting it's, screenshots i have some more to, to post too because i got comments I, to make yes it, <laughs> i it's a little bit weird. What, what is the deal with Thor wearing lingerie? <laughs> oh, he totally has a thong on, for reals. Like, uh, that's the thing that um, some of the people who are all about this this game, I was making comments about it a long time ago, about how some of these, these uh, you know, personas, even the ones that aren't even human-looking, are kind of, like, sexy-looking for reasons. And, uh yeah. <laughs> Although I I find it funny that by by comparison, uh, the Valkyrie you know is fully clothed. So yeah, I, just, I guess I, I guess we're flipping the sw- the script here. Yeah, I'm done with that. <laughs> she's going into battle. You know, she's not just lounging around like Thor is. Good point. Yeah, Valkyries yeah, do all so... the real work. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the one of the things I've been playing. I haven't been playing a whole hell of a lot because, uh, you know, I've been kind of running literally like all weekend. But I did play something else. So in my co-op corner, I played Sniper Elite 4 with Sam. Hmm. So, yay! Uh, for folks that are just joining us more recently, Sam and I co-op Sniper Elite 3 and a chunk of Sniper Elite 2, and also some of Sniper Elite Zombie Army Trilogy, which we're still trying to work on Zombie Army Trilogy. There are some people out there that have it ready and waiting to go. We just haven't gotten to that because we've been playing Vermintide lately. But <laughs> anyway, um, Sam and I, were doing this. So uh, as you may imagine, this is a shoot man's. So that's that's the thing you do. Uh, it has solid mechanics. It's fun to explore and to play, but I mean, like, um, what is there to really say about it? It's, uh, you know, it's a uh, sniper game. <laughs> but uh, the main thing I want to go over in talking about it, though, is uh, the differences between this versus three. Uh, this one's set in Italy. Three was in North Africa. Uh, we played a couple of levels, and the maps in this game are much bigger with all kinds of optional missions and stuff. Um, aside from the direct goal of killing whichever Nazi you're supposed to be killing in the particular mission, um, you also have options to kill all the officers, to find and snipe all, all the eagle statues in one of the maps, um, to collect all the lore, to blow up all the trucks and so on. Anyway, um, there's a lot of different things you can do, um, mostly involving shooting things. <laughs> uh, there's also an increased focus in this game on climbing mechanics and you can climb more stuff and the levels aren't just you know primarily horizontal there are also areas going up vertically as well we did some shit get to like a sniper sniper roost at one point to kill this guy that was you know shooting at us the entire level and we were just finally pissed and finally located where he was <laughs> um, to get there we had to jump out of a window and then climb up a chain and then use like a windowsill looking type of thing on the side to crawl over. So Sam was commenting. He's like, man, this is like um, some Shadow of the Colossus type shit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the climbing. So uh, but anyway, so that's cool. It gives you more to do. Uh, there's love- also a bunch of new weapons and items that have multiple functionalities. So, uh, every item has at least two different types of uses, um, you know, which may or may not be pretty much the same, but just with some slight adjustments. Uh, example is uh, a healing kit can stabilize and recover some health and some stamina, or it can just a hundred percent heal, you mm-hmm. know, like not, not replace stamina just heal you uh grenades can be normal use or they can become sticky or so on um 
the x-ray kills, which are kind of like a signature thing that Sniper Elite does all the time, are more detailed now. And they also display for explosion and melee kills, not just sniper kills. <laughs> so um, there also seems to be more of a story focused because there's more talky bits. And when we started Mission 2, there was a whole beginning that was in like a safe zone where you're just standing around talking to people and you actually get some characterization for your main dude. So he has like more of a, of like, he actually has expressions on his face. It's what? amazing. Like, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> that's kind of amazing. So I, I don't know if I was quite prepared for that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, had to, I had to go sit down. Weren't you already sitting down? Yeah. Well, in another room. <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway like there's also a lot more in-game documentation to read over if you want to immerse yourself in you know stories of of all these soldiers that are out there and you know all their various things going on um there's apparently also competitive multiplayer and four-player co-op horde mode but we are on the campaign we haven't gotten that far yet yeah so yeah, I'm uh, having fun with it, and I look forward to playing more. It's a solid game for sure, and it's definitely got some vast improvements over 3. And when huh. when Sam and I played 2, uh, we had played it after we'd already played 3, and it was just so hard to go back to 2, you know, because it's basically like a stripped-down version of 3 that it's like, mm, never mind, I, I think we're just going to go, you know, not play that, you know? <laughs> so. I mean, like, if, if, if we had played them in chronological order, like release date order, then two would have been fine. However, right. you know, because it plays fine. However, having already played the, you know, the third game in the series and then having all these different abilities and stuff and then having that taken away, it's kind of like, why am I going to do that? You know? Yeah. So. Um, are all of these Sniper Elite games uh, based in World War Two? That I know of, yes. Okay. I did not play the. I did not play the first one. All of the ones. I think you're the same ones. guy in all of them. Yeah, you are the same guy in all of them. Um, other than like I don't. Again, I, I have not played the first one. I poked my head in to look at the first one after I played the third one and liked it, and I was like, mm, that's a little too old and a little too rough. And then people who had played that game were talking about how. You know, the the different janky things with it and, you know, the things that you have to watch out for and things that are difficult about it. I'm like, that's all right. I have no emotional investment in this as like yeah. a, you know, a, as a storyline that I need to follow. I like yeah. the game that I played and it's fun. I do not feel the strong compulsion to go backwards, you know, yeah. so uh, but four is definitely good. So if you've never played a sniper elite game four is a good one to start with. If you already have three in your um you know, backlog or something, then play three, you know, if you haven't played two, it probably is a little outdated at this point versus other games. So you might want to try three or four. Yeah. The first two or they take place in Berlin is the, uh, mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah. Um, so how, how much of like a mission in this is stealth? Is it like all stealth? You fire someone and then you stealthily escape or is there any guns blazing parts? Oh, well, here's the thing. <laughs> the way this <laughs> <laughs> The way that Sam and I play is kind of like we go back and forth. We might be sneaky, sneaky and behave for a little bit. Okay. Um, do you remember, Ben, when I was playing, um, what was it? Uh, the Metal Gear Solid 5 something echoes. I don't know. Whatever the hell the, the little preview was for Metal Gear Solid 5. Ground Zeroes. Yeah. Oh, Ground Zeroes. Okay, there you go. Um, so Ground Zeroes, when I was playing that, I was talking about how, like, I might behave and I might be real sneaky and I'd be spending, like, a, you know, all this time, half this this uh, mission, sneaky, sneaky, and then just the compulsion to murder everybody just takes over. And then, like, I, I jump out. Jala behaves <laughs> until it's time to misbehave. Exactly. And then, like, I steal a tank and then off I go. And, like, that's, that's <laughs> the that. That's how that went. I, you know, go back and listen to that episode. I did it. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so, and then I tried to get out of bounds and it wouldn't let me. And that's when I died because I couldn't take the tank off into the wild blue yonder. I was so upset. <laughs> but, um, so like that's, that's me. And Sam's pretty much like, you know, like he's the same way. Like he'll, he'll sit there and he'll be, you know, doing pretty good. But then what he does is he's trying to perfect his sniping and get like all the headshots and the whatever to get all of the points and, and whatever that he can. 
So, you know, he might try to sneak into a position so that he can get a better shot, and then he ends up inadvertently raising an alarm and being seen, and then that's how he does it. But for me, I just, like, jump out there and just start killing dudes, so, you know. But you can do full-on sound masking, right? Like, uh, wait till, like, lightning strikes and stuff like that. Oh, no, there's a lot of generators and stuff that you can rig up for, um, you know, sound masking. There are loudspeakers that also will mask your sound. There are planes that go overhead or cars that go by or boats or whatever. Like, there's a bunch of different things that, that can mask the sound if you really want to go 100% stealth. That is not the way that I go. But that is a thing that you can do, yes. <laughs> mouthy, mouthy gulls. <laughs> Pretty much. So, well, are 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 you playing as uh oh Fairburn? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, like you're asking me to pay attention I, to the story. No. I, I think okay. I think the guy the guy you're playing as is like the the father of like uh U.S. military martial arts. He could be. But anyway, like they, they apparently added a bunch more melee stuff, but I haven't played with it at this juncture. Right. So, I mean, I guess they would have to have added more melee stuff because they have kill cam for melee now. So there must be new and creative ways to murderate everybody yeah. up close. So. Hmm. Sniper Elite 4. Fun stuff. What else? That's it. That is all. Okay. I well, played running. An endless runner all weekend. <laughs> an endless runner called life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have been playing, uh, trying to figure out how to use this incredibly inconvenient bottle opener that my mom bought me. So at Christ Christmas, my my stocking had two two items, which were obviously from Five Below. Do you guys have Five Belows up there or uh, where you're at? I've never even heard of such a thing. So there's, yes, they exist here. Yeah, there's stores that are, that, that are like dollar stores that are aimed at like teens. So you go in there and it's like, oh, everything is $5 or below. You can get like, you know, notebooks and trapper keepers and stuff like that. Like, you know, some some t-shirts, some very shoddily made t-shirts and stuff. The stuff that the, so, uh, they obviously got this for me. They got me two cool things. Uh, so they got me the, uh, oh gosh, skull shaped salt and pepper shakers. And I'm like, yes, please. Okay, cool. Um, and the other thing were, <laughs> was this bottle opener that is shaped like joke teeth. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm holding this. It's not like chatter teeth. It's not like a little like machine that'll go clack, 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 clack. No, this is like picture just a, a curve of teeth with gums in the middle. Where we where, where, with gums in the middle, like you you know, like gums are. No gums on either side. Um and in the middle, like where your where your front teeth would be, where your chompers would be, there's like a like a bottle opener, okay. Now, <laughs> it is not arranged in such a way that the curvature of the teeth would be used to like let you like get some leverage to pop something. No. The motion that you have to enact in order to pop up to pop a top off of a bottle um is against the curvature so like it's off to the side which means you have no leverage working for you uh, okay <laughs> i don't know i don't know why my mom bought this for me because i like skulls i've never i've never said i like teeth teeth are part of skulls um but wait, wait can you can you put it in your mouth and then appear to op like bite the top off of a uh, bottle good question that would be it's, hard for i mean let me let me see here well this the, it's made in china so it's 100 percent lead let me no no i can't fit it in it's very big no, it's, it's a, a, a a good try david that's a good that's a good idea Thinking outside the box, so I, mean, I opened up a beer with that, and that's fine. I, uh, I feel like what is, what is the uh, politically correct uh, version of it? That's what she said, Joe. <laughs> it's fine. I think it's still. I, th I okay. think right. I, I've not heard. I've not read a medium post about that being especially problematic. So fair enough. I, I, th I think that one comes baked. It comes baked in being kind of shitty. So there's no there, there there's no uh, there, there's no illusion about it. Um, no, so, <laughs> uh, games, games I have been playing, um, just stream stuff. Honestly, uh, I've been playing a little bit more golf story, um, on my own, but I don't have an awful lot new to say about that. Honestly, it's just fun top down golf game. Um, I really want to play that. It's very good. I, I watched Nick play some of that. Oh yeah. Any questions about it? 
No. So do you think? <laughs> <laughs> nice try, I, cool. I I know the 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 normal way this works, uh, but do you think if I like mailed you booze? Could you then <laughs> mail me the game? Like, could could we do like a long term, uh, long distance version of this thing? Uh, I only <laughs> ever, I only ever drink outside of the post office on very specific days. <laughs> but I don't like to publicize that because people people know the know the PO box number and they can, they they know where I go to get the mail. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, 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 we, we'd have to really coordinate it. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that interested in sending you my switch. Sorry. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> yeah, no. Golf story continues to be fun and charming. Um, man, I love a golf a golf video game. Um, the other stuff um, outside of playing Armored Core Four for Answer for WAF, which is a really good game. I normally don't talk about those on here, but uh, this was a surprise to me how much I like it. Um, if you have a PS3 or an Xbox 360, consider going for that because it's really good. Uh, the stuff I can't actually talk about is the things that I streamed this past weekend. So Chronicle of Innsmouth and um outlast and outlast um expansion pack yeah i saw some of this yeah yeah i did too <laughs> so chronicle of Innsmouth. i went into this with pretty high hopes honestly because hey it's a lucas arts style adventure game that is set and loosely based around you know shadow over Innsmouth, a very good you know novella short story by uh hp lovecraft springboard for a lot of cool stuff that i like i think like hey this the, this seems like a match made in heaven no no it is not um i was about to give it the benefit of the doubt for having a small team but it has a huge team um <laughs> yeah it's uh it's really weird because it certainly makes jokes like it's a lucas arts game but that undercuts any of the horror to it whatsoever um, it's it's got some really unsettling animations to it. <laughs> oh, the uh, the close ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a three hour game, and about two hours in, um, you start going into this like full on exposition mode. It's never done like full on close up character portraits up to this point. Um, and then what it shows you are just these kind of grotesque Hotline Miami esque um, limited animation. MS Paint slash Kid Picks kind of things um, that are really uh, it's I I kind of either want to leave my body or scream forever when I see them and I'm not normally the kind of person who exaggerates like that it's the most unsettling thing in the game mm -hmm. yeah um, and the puzzles in it are not very good and also there are action sections and stuff like I feel bad shitting on a game but like. You know, I have to be critical of this. It's I I went into it wanting a lot, and it didn't give me any of it, really. So, if I wasn't playing it for a stream, I would have dropped it. I'd be like, okay, I pay, I pay ten bucks for this, whatever. I can just wash my hands of it. But no, I embarked, and I saw it through to the end, and it really didn't uh, really didn't redeem itself. It didn't know what it wanted to be. Any questions Let's talk about, about a good game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Uh, so, Outlast. <laughs> Um, Outlast is good. Uh, Outlast is a game that's kind of in the vein of uh, Amnesia. You, people probably n n know, know of this. Kind of the premise is you're a photojournalist who gets a tip about some some really shady stuff that a corporation is doing in this old uh, asylum that is thought to be abandoned. Uh, and you go there and find out that, yes, there is an experiment that is transforming people and deranging them further. And the inmates have kind of had this riot and they've taken over the asylum. Uh, and you end up being trapped inside and kind of at the whim of both the corporation and, you know, the, <laughs> the, 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 the people who are housed there. Uh, and it's truly horrific. There's no combat. You end up running a lot. Uh, you end up hiding a lot. Like it's a, you know, it's one of those games where you walk up to a locker and it says hide in locker. Um, <laughs> it's foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah um we'll we'll get to whistleblower um but yeah it's um so I, I chose to play this because for as much as i like streaming horror games it's been a while since i've been scared by a game honestly like games can be stressful or they can make you kind of like jump like a jump scare is going to work on you because it's a lot of noise and a sudden image like okay fine and people laugh when they hear me go ah! um <laughs> and that happened a couple of times I, yeah. I, I went in like I was keeping Outlast in my back pocket in my back pocket because in the past it's been like, oh, this game is too stressful to play. You know, like I, I played a little bit of it. Um, 
and that is that that that, that is pretty much the case. Um, however, it really does it doesn't rise above like the level of stress. Like, okay, I am running, I am running, and something is going to sneak up on me and jump out at me, uh, kind of stuff. So it mm-hmm. ends up being more of like a like a stealth game than anything. Um, you know, at, at, at that point. And I don't know how I feel about that as like a failure to really like get under my skin. Uh, but it ends up working out as being like a faster paced alternative to something like an amnesia, right? In a modern setting that has this really cool, like you don't have a flashlight, you have a, a, a camcorder with night vision and uh, like a, like an infrared, infrared LED. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have and to... yet, despite having all of this preparation, you don't have a gun. <laughs> mm-hmm. he's, he's there to get a story, not kill people. What type of investigative journalist doesn't carry a gun? <laughs> I investigate with bullets. Yep. <laughs> I work with ink I, I and know. I'm just saying, when, when your <laughs> job description is makes very powerful people very angry at you, I feel like... Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. So there's some body horror stuff in this. Like, it gets really unsettling. The rubber really meets the road with uh, with the DLC, which is... And it's going to sound like I'm, a, I'm, I'm exaggerating or whatever. The last thing I want to be is one of those people who streams, who streams stuff and like yells and screams, ah, oh, fuck, whatever. Like, that's nah, not what I want to be. Um, but there is a sequence in the whistleblower that made a bile bubble rise up and I had to spit it out in the trash can by my desk. Uh, it's, it gets pretty intense uh, to the point where like I had to stop it and say like, hey, if people don't want to watch this. I'm going to give you 60 seconds if you want to leave. Yeah, you know, like no no hard problem, you know, like no hard feelings. Go ahead and go because like the whole back half of the whistleblower stuff is like it, it is unsettlingly sexual and misogynistic in a way that is played for very very effective horror. Like And would you say is it a good like is it used for a good thing or uh I mean, it's it's hard to say, like, for a good thing. Like, the person well, gets, like, it gets their thing, comeuppance. Like, I mean, is, is this, like, exploitation film, or is this, like, legitimate horror? Nothing nothing bad hap- nothing bad happens to a woman. <laughs> a lot of bad things happen to a dude. Um, but it's very much, like, uh, think of it like a Silence of the Lambs kind of thing. Like, it is, and this, this is mild spoilers or whatever, but, like, I'm, I, I should just lay this out so it's not being coy, so people can decide if this is, if this is you know something they something they can handle one of the kind of like boss monsters one of the monsters one of the boss people who's been kind of driven insane by this experiment serial killer he used to like go after women he was looking for the perfect wife uh he was made crazier and now he is looking among the population of all male inmates in order to find his wife and he thinks that by basically buzzsaw surgery he can you know be the perfect groom and sire his child it's uh it's really fucked up and they do a lot with, uh, let's say, controllable helplessness is the TV tropes term, where you can control the camera and not much else, and terrible stuff is happening. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like Skyrim. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't like the game that much. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, um, it really upset me. Like, not, like, you know, morally or whatever, but, like, it, 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 it shook me in a way that a game hasn't ha- hasn't hasn't tricked me. And so I guess I should have been careful what I wished for. Um so people who you know might be a little bit kind of put off by violence that gets really you know kind of kind of in the neighborhood of like sexual violence might want to stay away from that. It really caught me off guard because people said, "Oh yeah, like the like the 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 DLC steps it up uh and you know really makes it uh you know, much more intense than the main game. I didn't expect it to go in that particular way. And if I knew it was going to have that direction, I would have uh, exercised more caution about broadcasting it. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That said, though, it got a rise. It was effective. I don't know that I can say <laughs> if it was like, OK, so, so yes, it was an effective product. I can't say what the like what the societal cost of it is. You know, who knows whatever it's not glorifying anything like it's played for horror you're meant to go into it and be uncomfortable like <laughs> so, so it's ahead. almost like dead, dead space being too scary of a game it's like you did your job too well but oh, you have yeah. an unplayable game <laughs> yeah yeah 
Um, I'm excited though. I want to play uh, Outlast too. There, there, like there are mixed uh, mixed opinions about how well that kind of follows up on it. But like, I'm not so turned off. I just want to, you know, make it a little bit more clear that like, oh, that stuff is in play with this. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Jolly Ben, you, you you two watched. Like, what were your kind of impressions of that? Jolly, you, you didn't seem too impressed. No. <laughs> I don't think I saw anything in the latter half. Most of my, what I saw was just running around and being chased by people who looked, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to describe them other than like the uh, the uh, cover of the video game, like Condemned or whatever. The guy mm-hmm. with the, the blocky guy or like whatever the, the one Thanos guy from the Marvel movies. Looks yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So in in addition to being a insane asylum, it was also like a powerlifting gym. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no. Well, they're like they're, they're, much. they're ding dongs all over the place. That's my impression of a powerlifting gym, right? No, it's 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 a game that doesn't shy away from male nudity, which I I think is pretty pretty cool actually. Not from like it's not played for like sexual arousal or whatever, but like it's unsettling when somebody's coming at you with this flopped or copter or flopping, you know. <laughs> Um, and, they, and they've got they've got several enemies. Like so, the, the, there are two two kind of persistent enemies who follow you in the main game. Who are these twins who kind of speak calmly about which one, one of you, which one of them is going to get to eat your tongue, and which one's going to get to eat your liver? You know, um, and just kind of their buck nakedness and their placidity as they're chasing you around with knives and stuff is really unsettling. But you have a lot of like kind of basic enemies uh, who are running around with the power kind of the power play combination of tops no bottoms. So, 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 so shirt, but I guess, guess what's swing swinging down there below. Yep. That's right. You got yourself a ding dong. Like they, they invested in the programming to, uh, do the physics of that correctly. And they're like, all right, we got to use it now. (laughs) To to be fair. I mean, I'd rather it be, uh, you know, kind of flopping than the alternative. (laughs) This is true. Very true. (laughs) So, yeah, but like, I, I don't know, like, okay. We've discussed before my lack of reaction to horror stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, okay, there's a dude chasing me. All right. And <laughs> whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I was mildly entertained by the chat and by you and your reactions because, you know, I don't react to anything because I am dead and cold inside already. Um, <laughs> I just said As that I played this game specifically because I don't feel any, feel anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you were reacting though, dude. So oh, true, true. Yeah, you you had reactions, and I was just like, "All right," <laughs> you know. You're like, "Oh, there's a thing," and I'm like, "Yeah, there is a thing." Here. When the when the computers <laughs> rise up, Jala will be the only one that will be able to pass. <laughs> so so yeah and then like i didn't end up seeing all the whistleblower stuff because i got tired because i that was you were streaming that the day that i finished my marathon i was tired yeah. so i went well, to sleep you, know the days <laughs> you had already been through enough torture i i already like ran for you know forever yeah, yeah. and was coaching somebody and it, you know i was up since like two in the morning so i was ready to go to sleep <laughs> but yeah yeah, so I, I didn't see the really disturbing stuff, whichever that was. So, you know, whatever. Like, of a, what I saw, no, I was just like, okay, it's a game. Yeah. <laughs> you have the video up on Twitch or, like, YouTube, or can you go back and watch your playthrough of it? Yeah, it's up on it's up on Twitch. So what I've been doing with that um, is I've started editing those, like, putting on title cards and taking out some of the downtime. And, yeah. you know, like, like in the middle. Um, and so there's a little bit of a delay. I want to get to the point where that goes up on YouTube like a day or two after the uh, the broadcast. Um, mm-hmm. However, if somebody wants to watch it, like it's on Twitch on VOD, it's just not, you know, doctored. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who knows if that's a good idea or not? It's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm using it as an exercise to like, oh, like I like editing stuff and I don't really get a chance to do that anymore. This is a good low effort way to do it. So, mm. yeah. Go. Cool. So yeah, um, yeah. Well, I love how like uh, in the Hex Crank channel you've been like. So I wanted to play Corpse Party, but Jala wants me to be. You know, wants to, <laughs> you've mentioned it a couple of times. Yeah. I want to play Corpse Party, but Jala, damn it. Yeah. No, no. I just you, you asked me nicely. <laughs> yes, I, I I know I did. I, I would like. Wait, wait. What's so, going on? So, uh, he wants to play Corpse Party on the stream, and then um, he was like. 
I, I warned him at the beginning of uh, the year. I was like, this coming weekend, I have, you know, a XYZ number of parties. I'm going to be out, you know, for multiple days you know, in a row mm -hmm. of the weekend. So I won't be around for the stream if you decide to stream Corpse Party. Uh -huh. And uh, then, uh, you know, he was asking me if this last weekend, if he could stream it. And I was like, well, I'm going to be running my ass off. I'll be going to sleep real early. So, I mean, I'll be around for some of it, but mm -hmm. not all of it. So, yeah, no, I just, I was saying that like, oh, that like that, that's totally on deck. We had talked about doing that on the level. People were probably curious when that was going to start. Oh, that was just a way to say like, you know, don't worry. That's coming. You know, this next weekend I'll be is honest, clear between that the letter and uh doki doki whatever i i cannot keep like which of the games about you know young japanese teens being murdered uh people are talking about <laughs> the, the letter looks real good i see uh Chris, Chris Lee posting stuff on facebook yes. about that. yeah yeah so although like most of what i gather about that like i i pretty much every time i see anything from chris about that game it's like bitching about some character who drinks absinthe <laughs> like, <he's laughs> this game, drinking absinthe so anyway um i feel yeah. like i i don't know like maybe maybe they're using this against him but i feel like he should be he he has watched approximately all of the horror movies mm -hmm. so i feel like he should be if anyone's going to be able to keep their characters alive it should be him <laughs> right yeah. yeah so yeah um i'll check with you again when it gets closer to the weekend jala about if it's still okay to to do oh, it yeah, because this, I, re this... I really don't want to play it when you're not there because i know, you don't, I know yeah. you don't watch vod's yeah, I don't. I sure don't. Um, but yeah, I'm legit going to be around this weekend, not doing anything. Yeah. It's my chill weekend. Cool. So I'll get it, you know, at least I've been doing about six hours a weekend, so it'll probably take two weekends to co to cover that one. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's all that I've been playing. I'm trying to figure out. Let me let me try this again. <laughs> no, bottle opener is not going in. Um, and I'm really yeah. worried about the lead in that paint. Um, <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> Is that what you do with your time, David? No, it, it, it's legitimately like me me outfitting my house in, in the middle of Chinatown. It's been like, yeah. which things do I trust not to poison me if I buy them? Ah, something's going to get you. Just roll the dice. Yeah. <laughs> do y'all want to button it up? Buttons. The credit belts. No, <sighs> come on. Well, man. belts are okay. Belts, <laughs> belts can have buttons on them yeah. as decorations. They, they True. have buckles. Yeah, it's fine. Also, buckles and are and peace descends on the level. <laughs> also, wear belts. You know, They're fun and nice. You know, I forgot to mention it. You know how I said love and peace last episode. For, like, the two people who caught it, which, by the way, those two people actually did message me and tell me that they knew what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, like, the boss I just fought in Persona 4 Golden, uh, he has, a, a like, a, I don't know, a giant nighty on or something. And, like, on his nighty is a heart and, and then a peace sign. So it's love and peace on this boss that I just fought. And I was like, oh! <laughs> what a weird coincidence. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Let, let me let me try this. Yeah. Oh I... no. Okay. Um. I just, let me, okay. I threw it across the room. Uh. So thank you everybody. For, for, <laughs> <laughs> thank you everybody for 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 listening. Um. If you want to help out the show, uh, you can rate or review it in uh, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever they're calling it now. Google Play lets you rate and review stuff as well, which is appreciated. Um, and also if you want to tell your friends, that is really the only way that we can, uh, we can grow. Uh, we're on the kind of the verge of having some cool network stuff to announce, uh, but not yet. Just going to tell people to keep their ear to the ground. Um, otherwise, um, oh, the, the, the streams and stuff that I talked about, those are being archived on YouTube at, uh, youtube.com slash duck TV. That is alongside. So the hex crank live stuff goes up alongside, Nick's comrade archives. He's doing check it out. Comrade is a streaming show. Now, Jello mentioned watching oh, cool. him play golf party. 
uh, or mm-hmm. golf party, uh, play golf a, story. a golf story on there. And also Gary is doing a, uh, a series where he reads out, uh, choose your own adventure books. That is a show. That's he also calls... funny. I've caught that before. <laughs> he plays them with permadeath rules and it's very good. Uh-huh. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that is called choose your illusion too. Uh, it's, it's very good. He's in the middle of a, uh, like a Lovecraft inspired one right now. Um, otherwise, uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I, so I'm Cole Ross. You can find me on Twitter at Cole Ross. I'm David Mysmith on the interwebs. <laughs> I'm Jala Chan in places. I'm Ben Merkel at Merkel be on Twitch and stick around for some titles. Okay, um, I didn't write any down. I have a bunch, so it's cool. Okay, go. Go for it. All right, so join a dragon. <laughs> okay. That's talking about uh, David trying to get anywhere in Chinatown. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, you said this one. I think I might have wrote it down wrong. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Land of impromptu dentistry? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Feeling skanky? Uh, is there a G on that feeling? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> Hell no, G. <laughs> uh, an endless runner called Life. Ooh, I like that <laughs> one. Ouch. Uh, teeth are part of skulls. Okay. And flopped or copter. <laughs> to be fair, flopped or copter would balance out our, uh, Previously noted tendency for boob titles. Mm, true, true. <laughs> uh, who else has one? David, you got any? Uh, I I do not. Okay. Uh, man, we both slacked. I feel bad about that. Uh, ben, how about you? I also slacked. Holy this week. shit. That is okay. I carried the team. I right. did. Thank you, John. <laughs> um, I like an endless runner called Life. Sure. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Side note: um, Have have you have you yet painted the the uh, skull shakers in like uh, Dio de los Muerta colors? No, they they're like chrome, pl- like they're they're ah. shiny. They're they're they're, they're shiny. Um, they're, it's not the it's not the kind of skull salt and sh- salt and pepper shakers I would have wanted, uh, but they're, they're the ones that I got. So <laughs> they're the ones <laughs> you needed. Yeah. Uh, wow wow cole <laughs> remind me never to give you anything ever no! in life <laughs> i talked about them and said they were very cool i'm giving you shit it's fine <laughs> okay yeah i like them they're good they're they're they're, they're small you know what, what i don't like is uh <laughs> what, what i what i don't like is a uh a salt and pepper pe- salt and pepper shaker that uh feels like you, they're designed to brain somebody with like i'm not i'm not out here shaking pepper out of the mag oh, light wow. okay that's the exact opposite of what I look for in a salt and pepper shaker. In anything. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because well, you, you also know. like to carry around knives at all times if possible, so. Yeah. You never know when you're going to have to open up a package for various definitions of package. <laughs> <laughs> it could, could be. Could, could be uh, something you got from Amazon. Could be a torso. Of you course, know. you know, you say open up a package and my brain went back to flopter copter. <laughs> Wait a you, you, you never know when you're going to, have to <laughs> let the flopter copter escape. <laughs> yeah, because you're not going to go stand by that statement. Let, let lift off. <laughs> okay. uh, we're getting we're yeah. getting too close to whistleblower again. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to get this edited and slap it up real right, right quick. <laughs> what? Sl- slap it up? Is that is that, is that wrong? Oh, never mind. Go you're, ahead. You all right? Yeah, it's, yeah I'm fine. It's hard, it's hard to segue from Flopter Copter. <laughs> True. <laughs> that's, I, I'm going to have just... to cut I'm going to have to cut the audio eventually. I usually usually I cut it on uh so I hope you guys have a good week. Oh. Okay, I <laughs> hope you have a good week too. Goodbye. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>